When his tank commander was hit and gravely wounded, Specialist Birdwell got him to a place of safety and then took command. He knew his vehicle was on the first line of defense, so Birdwell stood in his commander's hatch at times, half exposed, at times standing entirely out of the tank, fully exposed, laying down suppressive fire on the enemy. He used the tank's cannon. He used the tank's machine gun. He used his personal rifle. He sustained fire, drove back the attackers, and created a place of relative safety for injured men behind the tank to take cover. Well, we're here because Dwight Birdwell, Cherokee citizen, is receiving the Medal of Honor, uh, which is just a tremendous uh, honor, uh, but one he's earned uh, with his service uh, in the Vietnam War. That's true. Dwight Birdwell is the only Native American to receive the Medal of Honor from the Vietnam era. Uh, he was a hero. Uh, he did such tremendous things for the country in that moment. And then what I think is also uh, worth noting is that he just continued to serve the country and his people in a lot of different ways. He is a humble guy. I mean, he still uh, would probably describe himself as a, a guy from Adair County. I mean, that's where he grew up. And uh, even though he's seen the world and, in, and made an impact in such uh, tremendously positive ways, uh, he's still, I think, that uh, guy from, from uh, Adair County. Uh, never forgot where he came from. And I think that's the reason that Cherokees everywhere really can relate to him uh, and can draw some inspiration uh, from uh, his life. Well, when I took office as chief, there was already an effort underway to get Dwight Birdwell the recognition that he deserved. So I simply did what I could to help in that effort, writing letters, uh, having a staff, uh, make phone calls to people who needed to hear uh, Dwight Birdwell's story. So I hope that we helped in some way. But really, it's just a matter of getting uh, his story in front of people uh, that can make these decisions. And I think once people saw the full story, story, the depth of his heroism, uh, it was surely an easy call to give him uh, the Medal of Honor. And then it was wonderful a short time ago to uh, find out that he was awarded the Medal of Honor. It's an a opportunity to bring honor to my Creator. Many people know as a God of Abraham, Moses, Joseph brings honor, respect, I believe, to the Cherokee Nation and its people, brings honor, respect to the 25th Infantry Division, the U.S. Army, and the unit I served with in Vietnam. I know it makes my family proud of me, and uh, it uh, lets the world know that I served with uh, dignity and pride and brought no shame to the Cherokee people. Well, I uh, grew up at Bell and I, I suspect you're familiar with Bell community. A lot of Cherokee people there, and uh, many of the uh, veterans in, uh, of uh, uh, the World War I, II, and Korea, and those who served in peacetime instilled in me the obligation to serve and bring pride to the Cherokee people. And uh, this is an opportunity to do that, as well as my unit, uh, the survivors of those who didn't make it, those who came back maimed and wounded, uh, this lets them know that the unit they served with is being honored and appreciated for what was done that day, saving the air base from capture in the North Vietnamese. It's a great honor. Personally, it's a bit overwhelming. And I don't think of, it's really sunk in that it's taken place. Maybe it's a dream that I haven't woke up from. Well, I, I'm, of course, very, very proud. I think back to a gentleman named Thomas Muskrat, who still alive, still lives at Bell, worked with me uh, an awful lot as a young boy, encouraging me to serve. Uh, I brought no dishonor to him, as well as uh, uh, my family and uh, many other Cherokees in the community. Uh, it just, I, something like I did my duty 
uh, I didn't disappoint you. I served with pride. And uh, I might not have done enough, but I did as much as I could. <laughs>